What's up guys, Neil here, welcome back to the channel. I had to get the uh, appropriate attire for today's video. I have the, the exponential going. Um, the acceleration is accelerating. We are literally turning the United States into an AI gigafactory, and that's not hyperbolic at all. Mark Zuckerberg announced over $600 billion being invested into US AI infrastructure. Sam Altman obviously has the $500 billion Stargate deal and they're making some steady progress. Here's a little update image of the progress that they have made so far. Google, obviously a very, very well-funded company, doesn't really have any problem uh, designing their own TPUs, which they are using for their own AI inference, and I expect that to be something that they use to stay in the race for quite a long time. <laughs> so it seems like they're going to be able to keep up with uh, that scaling as well pretty easily. Elon with XAI obviously has one of the biggest compute clusters on Earth right now, and they plan on having 50 million H100 equivalent GPUs by 2030. And many people will say, whoa, that's way too many GPUs. That's not even possible. The key word is H100 equivalent. So by 2030, we're going to continue to scale along Moore's, Moore's law. And the Blackwells of the future will make the current Hopper GPUs that everything is trained on look like nothing, really. <laughs> um, so that's kind of like the premise is like, 50 million H100 equivalent GPUs actually seems quite plausible. And we'll, we'll, we'll have plenty of energy to actually support that. And I'll explain why in just a little bit. And I actually think all of the frontier model companies will have about 50 million to maybe almost 100 million GPUs by 2030 to 2035. And uh, that, it'll equate to something like 100 to 300, maybe 500 million GPUs in total between all companies from 2030 to 2035, H100 equivalent GPUs. That's absolutely insane. <laughs> so just to give everybody a quick recap, Sam Altman said they're, they're about to cross over 1 million GPUs online by the end of the year, and they plan on 100xing that to 100 million GPUs. Um, they, what we do know for sure is in six months, they will have over 2 million GPUs online. So if you look at the trajectory of this company, whenever they were first incepted many, many years ago, they probably had, I don't know, thousands of GPUs. And now they are just starting to get to the point where they have 1 million GPUs. And in six months from now, they're going to double that to two, over 2 million GPUs. The exponential trajectory of this company is unprecedented, to say the least. And I expect this to continue to happen. Um, now, if we look at uh, Google, Google is in a very similar position. Right now, they have roughly 1 million H100 equivalents, and these are their Ironwood V7 TPUs, and they also have 500k H100 GPUs online. Pretty great, pretty great right there. Um, they're also getting 400 to 600,000 NVIDIA Blackwell uh, GB200 uh, whatever <laughs> uh, racks. So basically, 2 million H100 equivalent GPUs by the end of year. So OpenAI and Google will have roughly the same number of GPUs by the end of year, which is an unprecedented amount. Obviously, Elon has mentioned his goal of 50 million uh, of H100 equivalent uh, compute GPUs within five years. And I think, again, we will see that across pretty much all of these companies. All of these companies need to have that much in order to keep up. And as Moore's Law accelerates, as uh, AI is being applied to the de designing of these chips, it, it, it's very likely, actually, that we will easily see that number being crossed while staying pretty energy efficient with the computer chips because we can actually get some pretty good gains out of them still just by applying uh, algorithms to the design of the chips and just continuing along the arc of making these chips more energy efficient. I don't know if you're aware, but just from the H100 Hopper GPUs that we're currently training on to the Blackwell GPUs, it's a 10x energy improvement, literally 10x energy efficiency just from switching the chips. Now, the reason this is important is because of this. This is a tweet from Gavin Baker, who is one of the uh, investors in XAI. He says, important to remember that Grok 4, GPT-5, 
Clyde 4.1 Opus were all trained on H100 old school Hopper GPUs. We aren't even using the Blackwells yet. Expect to see a 10x energy efficiency gain. Expect these models to be much more snappy and quick whenever you're inferencing them, because they will be. Um, expect the intelligence to increase drastically whenever you're using them, because they will be much more intelligent, much faster. They're going to feel... I don't even... You can't even put words to how these things are going to feel. In, uh, like six months to a year to two years... Three years, it's you, you can't even put words to it. I think by six months to next year, the problem space of the computer will likely be solved. Instead of using your mouse and keyboard and solving problems manually on your computer, you just talk to your computer and it does things. We're going from the traditional way to the Star Trek way of using the computer, and I would bet six months to two years at most, we're going to see that transition. Um, and then it's all about robotics in the world of atoms from there. Wow. <laughs> So I know there's going to be some skeptics out there and, and they're going to say, well, that's not really the constraint. The constraint is energy. Energy is the only constraint that we actually have. And yes, this is true. This has always been true. Civilization is directly correlated to the amount of energy you can efficiently and effectively capture and deploy. This is the measurement of the Kardashev scale. But my argument is energy is being solved also. <laughs> Here is just a little graph. I want you to pay attention to 2010 to 2026 on this graph. That's not a very long period of time. Now, pay even closer attention to that two-year gap from 2024 to 2026. That is literally a doubling from that time horizon versus the past uh, 14 years. Pretty phenomenal, right? Now, I expect that to happen even faster and faster. The great beast of the United States is waking up. We are quite literally turning this nation into an AI gigafactory. Nuclear reactors are being brought online. There are, people are partnering with NVIDIA and solar companies to build self-sustaining data centers. Uh, uh, Helion Fusion is going to be deploying economically value, viable fusion for the first time ever in history by 2028. And again, that could turn out wrong. That's a prediction that is... Uh, uh, something that we don't know for sure, but we are, or Helion is tracking the uh, production of nuclear fusion of their facilities. And it looks like by 2028, if their modeling turns out to be correct, um, 2028, they will actually be deploying that for OpenAI's compute clusters. So it seems like OpenAI is already going to have pretty much a self-sustaining compute cluster. There's already many partnerships happening with self-sustaining compute clusters. Uh, Elon is already starting to um, make his self-sustaining compute clusters by like buying massive like gas things and oil rigs and stuff or whatever. I'm not exactly sure the details, that, um, but he also has uh, uh, Tesla uh, energy and solar city and all that stuff. So, I mean, if he really wants to, he can just build a solar farm. He's got the money. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, th th there's really just, like, not many constraints left. Zuck's building his nuclear reactors. Google's building nuclear reactors. Microsoft's building nuclear reactors. Everybody's building nuclear reactors. And everybody's building solar farms. And everybody's, yeah, th th like, the acceleration is accelerating. It's kind of uh, surreal. We're kind of, like, unifying as a nation right now and entering the second Cold War, which is the AI Cold War. And robotics are coming. <laughs> And the dexterity of robots are accelerating drastically. If you look at how well these robots are able to actually, like, use their human-like hands, hands that are designed like humans with five fingers, not just a little claw grabbers anymore, real, like, human hands that are dexterous and have broad capabilities. They can be extremely steady and pick up relatively small things, and it's insane <laughs> i'll play a video in a second but it's actually pretty profound how well these uh, systems are doing this now the reason i think this is so important is because if we look at the economy and how it is currently powered it is powered by human labor especially in america where we have a services economy um, human labor is what makes our economy work so what powers human labor well it's u.s dollars u.s dollars power human labor and um we are effectively trading U.S. dollars to acquire food, 
water, and shelter, because that's all that it takes for humans to be able to apply economically valuable work to the economy. Well, whenever these robots are getting better and better and better, they're going to be much smarter than us and much more much more dexterous than us. Um, it goes from U.S. dollars to kilowatt hours, meaning energy economics, Kardashev economics, is the new economic system for the future. So the reason I mention this is I would personally, if I were you, recommend I would recommend uh, looking into either buying energy technology such as solar panels and batteries or trying to develop your own. <laughs> um, maybe both. Who knows? But I do think uh, Kardashev economics or an energy-based economy is the one we're going to. And we've kind of always been there. It's just that the main way of supplying energy to humans is to have this medium of exchange called the U.S. dollar that allows us to buy food, water, and shelter. And that is the energy that keeps the economy going. Right now, we're going to the process of removing the human from the loop and replacing it with automation, which requires only energy. And civilization itself is only bottlenecked by the rate at which you can efficiently and effectively capture and deploy energy from this point, which means it is now the new unit of economics, which means you should probably be investing in capturing and deploying energy in the most efficient and effective way possible, or at least learning how to. Yeah, so if you haven't noticed or if you haven't had any data centers being built near your house yet, um, you probably haven't noticed your energy bill going up. But if you have data centers being built around where you live, you might notice your energy bill going up. This isn't going to stop. This is going to happen to every single household in America as these data centers continue to be developed. To me... I think a, a, a fantastic solution is to become a uh, post-economic yourself by providing yourself with your own energy and then even having so much of a surplus that you can sell that energy back to the grid because that is the number one constraint of the future, as we just said. I don't care how many nuclear reactors they're going to be bringing online. I don't care how many whatever they're going to be bringing online. The post-scarcity energy society, whatever, like... There will never be enough energy, is the simplest way to put it. Um, energy will always be a constraint, therefore it'll always be the most valuable thing. Which means your entire business model could be literally just capturing and deploying energy and then selling it back to the grid. And that was what makes you post-economic. Because it'll be so scarce, and it, they'll need it so badly to scale the compute clusters. I don't, I don't think people realize it, but the scaling of compute will be one-to-one -one with energy. The scaling of compute will be one-to-one -one with energy. From here on forward, it is that simple. This the scaling of the economy and automation and computes will be one-to-one -one with the rate at which you can efficiently and effectively capture and deploy energy. It'll be a one-to-one -one ratio because it'll always be at the upper limits of the energy you can efficiently and effectively capture and deploy. Invest in energy technology. I can't make this more abundantly clear. 